Heavy Weapon, a game where you can be the weapon of mass destruction. First off, I will start off on the controls and weaponry of the atomic tank. Controls for console players involve using the left joystick to move and right joystick to aim where you are shooting. PC players on the other hand have a funny conundrum to deal with, and that is moving and shooting is all based on where you're aiming and positioning your mouse cursor. This in my opinion makes the game much harder and challenging than how it should be. Beyond that, there are 6 additional upgrades that for the most part do more damage to flying and ground enemies. First upgrade is Defense Orbs, which is the only defensive upgrade in the game. By some miracle, a floating energy ball will circle around the tank, able to disintegrate any projectiles fired. Of course, said projectiles can still hit the tank, since the Defense Orb can't block all 180 degrees of the tank at once. This can be upgraded to get more orbs added up to free. however each increase slows down the overspinning around the tank. Whether the one orb is preferred for how fast it goes versus free slower orbs is up to the player to decide. Next upgrade is Homing Missiles. Pretty self-explanatory from the name, upgrading increases the rate of fire these missiles are produced and sent out. I personally enjoy upgrading these fast since they are guaranteed consistent damage no matter where the tank is aiming at. The laser is an upgrade that periodically bursts out in the direction the tank is aiming to do a good amount of damage and feels visually powerful on the latter upgrades. Rockets are essentially non-homing missiles that will shoot out in the direction aimed at, with continuous upgrades increasing the number of rockets shot out up to free. The flak cannon is an anti-air attack that is shot at flying enemies. For console, this attack is generally aimed as a spread. For PC, this attack is aimed at wherever the cursor is currently marked, which leads to better precision, of course. Upgrading increases the spread and duration of the flak. Last tank upgrade is Thunderstrike, which is a lightning bolt hitting one enemy then bouncing to multiple other ones, doing damage to each enemy. Upgrading this move increases the amount of times it jumps between enemies and does more damage. Moving on from upgrades, there is in fact a story which is presented in missing mode. Spoilers ahead, be advised. Starting off with the defeat of the allied forces, who are hopelessly outgunned and outnumbered by the Red Star forces, a scientist suggests that they negotiate a surrender. However, there remains one way left of surviving and turning the whole war around, and that is the Atomic Tank. With such great capabilities, the Atomic Tank does prove a formidable force against the enemy. After defeating what appears to be the entire Red Star army and their powerful machines and weaponry, the Red Star appeared to have anticipated such a possibility and instead hit a reserve 10 times the size of their original army that was defeated. Of course, with an emphasis on destroying the atomic tank, there is another go around in defeating the enemy at East Territory previously visited only much harder than last time. After finally defeating the enemy at their own headquarters, the war seemed to be coming to an end with the soldier inside the atomic tank finally ready for some brewski. In terms of game modes, there are three total, Missions, Survival, and Boss Splits. PC does not have Boss Splits unfortunately, whereas consoles do. Starting off with Missions, this mode offers insight as to the story behind the Atomic Tank fighting the Red Star which was just covered. Before and after each mission, upgrades are presented except for the very first mission, which acts as a beginner introduction for how the rest of the missions will go. Before each mission, there is info on the area such as population and primary exports. Most importantly, there is intelligence on what kind of fighting weaponry the atomic tank will be facing. Each enemy will have armor which determines how hard it is to destroy, a score which will be added once having destroyed one, and weapon used. Some enemies such as a C-31 Fabrowski cruise missile doesn't have a weapon, rather it itself is the weapon targeting the atomic tank wherever it goes and trying to ram into it from the air. Each mission will have a set amount of miles to survive before reaching the boss at the end. Early missions have less miles meaning it takes less time to reach the boss, whereas middle to later missions will take much longer to reach due to how many miles the tank has to cover. There will be signs indicating how many miles left or the much more obvious arrow in the care at the top of the screen where reaching the end yellow line will start the boss fight. Additionally, during each mission the tank starts off with a weak seal. Over the mission, a white chopper will drop either a permanent upgrade for the tank such as increase in speed, damage, or even more spread of fire, and the occasional drops in shields and nukes over the mission for the tank to max out on its shield and to have up to 3 nukes to use to eliminate all enemies on screen. Other than the bosses would still do quite a bit of damage to it. During missions, waves are usually brought out against you with certain enemies being paired up, which does change over different missions. Some easy waves can be the TS-31 Krisnik Carpet Bomber and TA-21 Frinska Heavy Bomber combination. T-84 Free Spetsnack Bomber, R34 Hominid Prop Plane, and Modified Pickup Truck Combination, and even the S34 Reflex Spider and H51 Barscob Munitions Blimp Combination. 
While each mission has their own set of enemies paired up each time not being the same across each mission, sometimes it's a relief to get the same wave again or not to get the same wave again. Not even thinking about what group of enemies is next, maybe just one enemy is enough to increase the chance of reaching the boss. Such enemies are the Sobak Bulldozer who as soon as it touches you, it's immediate destruction. CS148 Romanov Attack Silent which can be harder to predict especially in conjunction with different enemies on screen. Who suits out a one shot laser and it's an error death for the tank. And finally, the TF-77 Havansky Atomic Bomber who throws out atomic bombs and if it lands, you go bye-bye. These three alone are a pretty big problem, now imagine, paired with other enemies or even combinations of the three of them, and it creates a problem of imagining the wave being a bit more difficult to survive through. Replaying the same mission will result in different order of waves different from last time, unless by some very unlikely RNG. In total, there are 19 missions to beat, where of course first go around is 9, and after the Red Star unleashes their reserve, it will be another 10 missions, with the last mission taking place at their headquarters. Moving on to survival mode, you start with no upgrades as you face more enemies at once than normally in mission mode. The white chopper will appear constantly whether to get more sealed or random tank upgrades to boost up the tank as more and more enemies show up over time. The tank upgrades not only are the usual increase in speed and more bullet spread, but the ones you upgrade in between mission level systems of Defense Orb and Flat Cannon since in surround mode, there is no menu or level system to get these. Goal is just to survive as long as you can facing a heavy onslaught of all kinds of enemies getting increasingly harder over time. Thankfully nukes are also dropped to fend off some ridiculous scenarios where an atomic bomb can't be shot down is about to hit the ground. This mode is mainly for fun and how long you or you and your friends can last while enduring constant warfare. There are differences depending whether you're by yourself or even what platform you play survival mode on. For PC, threat mode gives you only one life and once you die it's game over. There's also no multiplayer. For console, you are given free lives per single player and for multiplayer, you have an unlimited lives however at least one person has to stay alive until the rest of the atomic tanks respawn or else it's game over. Regardless, it is a fun time whether on PC or on console just to improve the score and see how long can you actually last, of course with PC being harder and probably more challenging and more respect to the score, but also it's just a fun to do with your friends or other buddies if you have around town, local or online if it's still accessible. Boss split is really just a fun mode where you face up against every boss from Mission Mode without needing to go through 5 minutes of enemy waves each time. Atomic tank upgrades are given at the beginning of each boss fight from the white chopper with the exception being the first one, with upgrades being both the regular tank ones and the special armory ones. The one caveat is that there is only one life and with 19 bosses to fight can be a bit challenging. Thankfully it doesn't take long to defeat them with an estimate of about 15 minutes or less to do so. I will briefly go over each boss and their capabilities. First boss is Twin Blade where the first encounter is the boss only having homing missile weapons. One on each side which are destroyable which can render the boss useless. Second encounter will add an energy can on each side which will allow it to still do damage even after losing its homing missiles. There is one minor difference where on console it will suit 4 missiles and on PC 2 missiles at the tank. Next boss is the battle sip where it has multiple energy cannons shooting at the atomic tank as well as homing missiles being fired from the center of the sip. Energy cannons can be destroyed leaving only the homing missiles to be worried about. For console, the whole battle sip is shown on screen whereas for PC only two thirds of the battle sip is shown at a time, where it transitions upon losing energy cannons on one side of the sip. The War Blimp is a tough boss. Two ways the boss can do damage is through the use of Rotom Mines and the Meteor Tractor Beam. The Rotom Mines are rotating spears that look like metal planets that pop up from the top of the blimp and randomly go left, right, or up and somewhat home in onto the tank, but not as capable as the regular homing missile as they would typically hit the ground first. They are very hard to destroy as they have quite a good amount of armor and it's often better to just try to tank away from them and just shoot the blimp rather than take out each Rotom Mine heading towards you. The tractor beam attacks first suits into the sky and then shortly after causes a meteor shower to rain down, requiring either the nuke to destroy all meteors or just dodge all of them. The blimp will repeat the same attack order first starting with the Rotom Mines then the meteor shower and repeat again and again. The war record compared to other bosses really only has one weapon which is the wrecking ball. The boss simply swings the ball back and forth where the crane will change up how far the ball will go on screen by moving quickly or slowly across the platform. Second time facing war record will cause the ball to be low enough and destroy the ground causing rocks to fly into the air needing to either be destroyed or dodged. While the rocks will only take a seal out of the tank, the wrecking ball will destroy the tank regardless of seals and will require costing it to keep in the tank into safe spots. Kami Kong or Gorilla Zilla, totally not related to DK or KK, is a giant gorilla that has two attacks, 
bursting rockets and stomping on the ground. The gorilla will throw rockets into the air that will burst above the atomic tank sending out 6 energy bullets spread out like a star or hexagon shape. After throwing several rockets out, the gorilla will then begin stomping to the other side of the screen where the tank needs to go under while Kami Kong is still in the air or else it will be instantly destroyed. The Aibot is an octopus robot that suits landing onto the ground from the tip of each of its arms that it will instantly destroy the tank and will at times make itself vulnerable by opening its weak spot to shoot out energy bullets. This boss will be invincible as long as its eyes close off which happens whenever lightning attacks are sought out. If all the tentacles are destroyed then the boss will permanently keep its eye out, however energy will constantly be sought out until the boss is destroyed. The head zeppelin is a giant floating head that suits out armored homing missiles and after a bit moves to the opposite side of the screen carpet bombing with armored bombs. Pretty easy boss as long as the armor bombs are sought at while the head traverses across the air. The mech worm is a sand borrowing worm that can go airborne after emerging from the sand. While airborne, the boss can suit out armored bombs before heading back into the sand. Every time he emerges, boulders will go into the air. If the tank so much as touches the mech worm, it will get destroyed. Overall, tough boss even after destroying the missile launcher for the armored bombs, as it will begin to suit out homing missiles while still continuing its assault with the sand. Second to last boss is the H bot. This boss boss will land in the middle of the screen and begin jumping towards the atomic tank which of course landing on the tank will lead to immediate destruction of it. The arm acts as a seal for its main body and will need to be destroyed to do meaningful damage. However destroying both arms will lead to the robot shooting pink laser beams towards the tank which are equivalent to energy shots from other enemies. Constant movement is necessary to not get instantly killed by the stomp and paying attention to the laser firing. Final boss aka the secret weapon stands as the final testament of difficulty to the game where there are three phases to the fight. First phase is the boss shooting energy beams at you where they will instantly destroy the tank. Shots fired are not always the same direction or pattern and will change constantly, sometimes diagonal, curvy, or straight down while the boss is moving throughout the air. After enough damage dealt to the boss, the second phase leads to the boss setting its outer layer armor off and shooting energy bullets from a rotating cannon. On top of the atomic bombs are spewed out as well, requiring constant firing on the bombs to prevent instant death. At the third and final phase, the boss once again sets an inner layer of armor and begins firing homing missiles. Two homing missiles are armored and the other two are regular ones. Also, the one pilot the secret weapon is the Red Star Leader himself. Once having defeated the secret weapon, then the results will pop up showing all the bosses crossed out and the time it took to beat the game mode. Of course, this will pop up if killed once at any point and will show the remaining bosses not crossed out and time finished though. Fun game mode to try out whether it is to beat previous times or just destroy some good old bosses. While the game is short and doesn't have much else to offer besides these three modes, it's still pretty fun and challenging. It is cool to see a map, which area are you attacking, what kind of enemies are there, obviously memorizing these long names for each enemy in the game isn't going to happen, but just knowing what they look like and what they can do is enough to let you know how challenging surviving the mission may be, not even including the boss at the end, right? There is also survival to see how long it can last in an unfair matchup against enemies stronger than you would ever face in missions. Now going back to there being different versions of the game such as the console so in the computer, there's even different music between the Xbox and the PlayStation. The PlayStation version has a complete new album of soundtracks for each stage and even the main hub all essentially being rock songs which is kinda cool. Of course, the console versions are probably the superior ones to play this game as while the computer one is usually cheaper, at least I would hope so, and readily available, the small screen given for the tank to run around side to side versus some types of enemies doesn't give the same feeling as the console version does with such a wide open space in comparison. Not even including the controls who I dare say completes this game on a computer has the satisfaction of being the game with a disadvantage. Because the strategy changes upon seeing a bulldozer coming at you while having to deal with air enemies knowing that bulldozer ain't stopping until it's destroyed. Nevertheless, I started with the computer version who knows how long ago now back when PopCap released so many games and I am still grateful to be able to play this game and of course beat the whole thing sometimes at one go in missions mode. I do appreciate the upgrades add a bit of flavor on attacking or defending against bosses and waves of enemies. Not even including the mega laser that just destroys anything it touches which can be useful in some ways to survive through. To anyone who plays this game, good luck with the robot and secret weapon boss, and be careful of getting a bit too close to some of them. Other than that, I leave y'all to it.